Hello, my friends, and welcome to another I Have a Loft Alive video. This is not a new episode in the series. This is a pack collection video. The intersection between pack collection and I Have a Lie is me explaining some of the jokes and shenanigans that happened in it. And we have gotten to the Madam Gasket video. There's a lot of stuff in that video. And yada yada yada. I mean, I have, I've, I've said my long intro, you know, if you can see that, many times. So, I mean, I don't think I have to say it again. Did I click the record button? I think I did. Yeah, I did. There would be a pause icon there if it's paused, but since there's a square there, that means it is recording. Um, let's see. Eye switches. Um, you can control some of my shenanigans, and it's uh, if this, then that. But do know I have a right to reject nice witch if there's something inappropriate there or anything too crazy yeah impatient editor I said I'll get to that soon be patient anyway I really needed to do something with ACT UP, Port Horizon. I had started one part of it with Windows Movie Maker before I got Filmora, but that has been very slow and I hadn't been working on it much. I decided to just share what I had so far on I Will Have to Lie Season 2, and sometime I will start over that part with Filmora. ACT UP is a series that started as a funny idea I decided to do with Human Beat which is a cappella like my acts, but this video is not an act. By the way, that one cough I did that one time in that one part is fake. It's not in the music, so I don't know why I did it. I started this I Bluff to Lie Season 2 video by explaining Act Up Port Horizon, but editor me was getting impatient and put text on the screen pointing to the Bean Boozled box. Glitchy radio type stuff. Because they're like glitchy radio types. Because of radio glitchy type. I started to mention the glitchy radio type stuff in Port Horizon, but I found an Acties type spot on. Oh, I see. I started to mention the glitchy radio type stuff in Port Horizon, but I found an acne type spot on my face. Editor me put in some of that glitchy radio type stuff to show what I was talking about because that was a perfect opportunity to do so. Usually, I have six uncut recordings for ACT UP, but because there is glitchy radio type stuff... But because there is glitchy radio type stuff, I decided to make a glitchy type video for ACT UP, Port Horizon, and have the other five videos be uncut. With I accidentally said, I created Movie Maker. I did not create any kind of video editor. Here is a super challenge for a super expert low-level programmer. Create a full feature video editor entirely with assembly. Yeah, nobody is going to do that, right? I searched later in the video to find anywhere somebody said with and I found Ryan saying with and put that in place. Now the sentence is corrected. I created with Movie Maker. Walks in the woods. Banner that you could see in Pack of Alham. Walks in the woods. But I, I made Pack Valham walks in the woods before the full version of Femora was purchased, so there is a big watermark of Femora, and it is a horizontal banner. I had just said walks in the woods, so editor me clarified that by inserting when I said Pack Valham earlier, 
So that this is now Pack of Valham walks in the woods. Madam Gasket's first appearance. We are finished thing there. It's, on, it's going to be less than four minutes because that's the video that I'm taking and chopping Chop, chop. bits of it. So in this when I first got to this part while editing, I didn't think of Madame Gasket. The idea of including Madame Gasket came much later in the video. I said chopping, so I decided to put Madame Gasket saying chop chop here too. Madame Gasket's second appearance. Popped it up. Chop chop. Different pieces and oh, it's also a microphone. When I first got to this part while editing, I didn't think of Madame Gasket. The idea of including Madame Gasket came much later in the video. I said chopped it up, so I decided to put Madame Gasket saying chop chop here too. Mouth sound. So it will be out there. I made a mouth sound and Editor B made it louder. Almost 3.5 minutes feature, which... How long have I been ranting about this? Well, not really ranting. Okay. Editor B noticed that I was talking quite a while... Dur no, I missed that. Editor B noticed that I was taking quite a while talking about Act Up Port Horizon, specifically almost 3.5 minutes, at least with this editing. Somehow, I noticed the text while recording and was surprised at how long it was taking. Or at least, that's the joke. I planned it while recording. I knew I was taking quite a while, but not specifically how much. You've said that before. Yeah, meet the text will help me with it. Now it's time for I the lie. The lie. It, this is I belong the smart lie. Side. It's not my smart side. It is not my smart side. You said that before. It is. This is not my smart side. This is Pack of Elham. This and is remember, I belong the lie. Subscribe to DGR. And remember what my smart side always says: If you are smart, click the like button. But if you are a genius, then click the dislike button. I shared Ryan's the oh that's uh next one. Start over. No, oh, that was the previous one. Here we go. Here's Ryan again insisting that this is my smart side. I tried to make it clear that this is Packerelham, but of course you can see that right there. Point to Pack of Elham on the screen. Oh, yeah. Right here. What if I told you that this specific explanations video is on my smart side? Did I make you look? The Paradigm. Please check out The Paradigm YouTube channel. What's that? Uh, I'll put the link in the description. You should click the link in the description. Check out The Paradigm. It used to be Green Rhino Videos, but you rebranded your channel. Changed Green Rhino Videos to The Paradigm. Time for I Will Off the Line. Yeah. I shared Ryan's YouTube channel. It used to be Green Rhino Videos, but he has rebranded it as The Paradigm. The description on the about page of The Paradigm is, and I quote, Biblical theology and political science explained from a non-biased perspective. I love answering questions. End quote. Editor B put the Paradigm's profile picture on the screen roughly in the direction I was pointing at, toward the top right corner. 
but not where it covered either of our faces. Ryan denied knowing his YouTube channel, but I think he was joking. Another act. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Pack of Alham in, an in no. another act. It's not an act. Welcome to Pack of Alham. I belong. Now, Ryan is insisting that this is an act. I believe both times Ryan insisted this was my smart side, and also this time Ryan insisting that this is an act, he was joking. That interrupted the intro, so I skimmed through it with my speech from the beginning. Bumper intro. Well, off to lie, it's a series where it's been a lot of fun. I look like an idiot. Oh. There is a bumper on the screen. So I used it for the O and I belong to lie. Hey, the bumper has two shades of green, so I made the text color be the darker shade of green. Hey, see who came home from work. The guy who, who thought this video was an act on my smart side. But it's not an act on my smart side because my smart side does not have any act except for like the behind the scenes of bumper car which has nothing to do with that bumper on the screen there. But this is I'm off by own path while I am. That is no word. I'm rambling, not reading the script, so anyway, let's continue. Change, I mean, yeah, I worked, okay. Change the frame. At the end of this ad, he's... Well, it changed on me. The frame changed on me. But the editor me can show the previous frame, whatever. Well, unless I can put it out here. So, he asked Limu, hot dog or chicken? You can see he has hot dogs there and chickens there. But... I wanted to make a comment about what Doug said, and he was on the screen while the ad was paused, but then the frame changed. I knew that editor me can show the previous frame. I duplicated the video, cropped around the ad, and put it at the right place at the right time. Then I had a better idea of putting it to the right, so editor me cropped around Doug. The comment was that I saw burgers in addition to hot dogs and chickens. But Doug did not ask Limu about the burgers. So as you can see, which looks like brown, round things. I think those are burgers. You can see longer, lighter brown things. So those are the hot dogs. And he, obviously, these are chickens. So hot dog or chicken. But those to me look like burgers. Uh, wait. Here. I said, uh, wait, because I wanted to point to the burgers with my mouse cursor. Editor B repeated it a few times to be funny, but then I noticed that it had a nice beat. I calculated the time signature, and it is 3-4. Funky box step is in 3-4, so I put that after a few, uh, waits. I sped up funky box step to match the tempo of my, uh, waits. Usually in music, there are phrases in four measures, or eight measures, so I have eight uh, weights. Sometimes there's a pickup measure at the beginning, and Funky Box Step has one, so I put the pickup measure at the fourth uh, weight, and had the next four measures play at the last four uh, weights. Emu Diet. And also, what do you think about bird eating other birds. Well, some birds of prey do that, but emus aren't birds of prey. They, do they eat? Do emus eat uh, emu diet? Here is more research that has nothing to do with the basic concept of I will lie. Some birds of prey eat smaller birds, but emus are not birds of prey. 
Why would Limu the emu eat chicken? I searched for emu diet to find out what emus eat and confirm that emus don't eat chickens. Foxes eat birds. Okay, what, what emu? Emu? During the blank white page after I entered the search before the results appeared, Editor B made a joke and put it on the white page. Foxes eat other animals, including birds. Dina Fox is a character on Superstore, played by Lauren Ash. She is strict and enforces the rules of Cloud Nine. She is a vegan, which means she doesn't eat meat, so this fox doesn't eat birds. She had many birds as pets. Amy Sosa is another character on Superstore, and she was played by America Ferreira. She is not a good cook. Neither is another Amy from another show, Santiago from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> Remember that Thanksgiving episode where they kept putting Amy Santiago's food into the toilet and the, the, the clogged at the toilet? And... I digress. Uh, back to... Superstore with Amy Sosa, but not at the store, at Amy's house. Um, one time, she invited her co-workers to her house for a party. Uh, nobody wanted to eat the chicken because it was badly cooked. The person you would least expect to try the chicken, yes, that's Dina, actually was the only one who tried the chicken to try to make Amy feel better. Though strict at work, Dina's not mean. The Not That Dave joke from episode 1, part 2, still no beans yet, included another scene from Superstore. See that explanation for more information. Should I explain this one? He would have blocked our way. That's what she... How do I do that? Ah, sorry. I will do it anyway, but I will put it lightly. That's what she said is a phrase that is often said after somebody says something that can be misinterpreted as being cheeky. I don't know if it originated in the office, but sometime between... I guess I didn't know much or enough about the office between writing this and me now, but Michael Scott, who's played by Steve Carell, often says that's what she said. And in fact, Steve said it in one of his speeches, or he got the audience to say that's what she said. So I digress to go back to here. Title of your sex tape is a recurring joke in the sitcom Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and it has the same meaning as the first one I mentioned. I started to say both, but then I stopped myself. Super Ball! Did we get a Super Ball in this video, or is that a different thing? I was updating the bingo board. One of the spaces is Super Ball obtained. I asked if we got a Super Ball in this video. When I mentioned Super Bowl, Editor Me put in a brief part of Speakeasy by Shane Ivers while Colossus by Kevin MacLeod was still playing as background music. This references one of the After Black things where I pretended that Speakeasy was the Super Bowl music that Dave likes to dance to. That will be shown in the I Belove to Lie After Black things video. No Cortification Uh, this, uh, uh, I'm confused. It says no quarterfication, but clearly there was a quarterfication. But a lot of these quarterfications are named after a word or sound that Dave makes. In this case, Dave said that anyway. I digress. Dave went in a pipe. 
Uh, maybe should have said into a pipe. I digress. How many times am I going to digress in this video? I don't know. But anyway, they went into a pipe, then went back through. He then realized that he fell for a troll, so he said no. I quarterfied that as I like to do. Mother in the background. I first noticed that my mother was vis vis visible when then then the <laughs> Fumble so much while reading this. I don't know. I, I don't practice it be beforehand, and I'm not really cutting anything out unless it's like too bad. Maybe it's. I mean, I typed it, so I should know what it says. But it's been a while. Say it with me. I digress. I first noticed that my mother was visible on the right side of my face cam in the background, so I pointed. You probably wouldn't know why I was pointing, so editor me duplicated the video, cropped around the face cam, and made it bigger so you can see my mother in the background and pointing to where she was better. All yeesh, cortification. Get hit by a... Dave said, all yeesh. I quartified that as I like to do. Title of your sec... Snap the hit. Get hit by a... Wait. Get hit by a spiky meatball. Title of your sec... Sugar, dude. We... Before the all yeesh quartification, Dave said... Now, we're not going to get hit from the spiky meatball. After Dave said, aw yeesh, either that's when I thought of it or when I decided to share it. I started Brooklyn Nine-Nine's title of your sex tape joke, but again I stopped myself. B-9-9 I'm not going to finish that reference. If you get it, you get it. If you don't get it... You wouldn't get it anyway if I finished. No. I said I was not going to finish that reference in the video. Well, now I have for the Jokes and Shenanigans Explained video. This is subtle, and I'm not sure if anybody else watching will notice it. I put the text 99 after the B on the bingo board. So together it says B99, a reference to Brooklyn 99, which is where title of your sex tape came from. Pretty much only Brooklyn Nine-Nine fans would understand my reference without me finishing it, and pretty much every fan would understand it. On second thought, how could you be a fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but yet not know what title of your sex tape means? How could that be possible? I, by this point, believe that you would know what the next word would have been after I, because I've said I digress so many times in this video so much already. I mentioned the mouth sound that I did earlier, so I might as well mention this one, even though I didn't mention it on here. It also sounds like the editor me made that one louder, but... Hey, Ryan!
I listened to the original recording without music. From what I could hear before I resumed the trolled video, my mother had a job for Ryan. He said, uh-oh. The job was him... was... no. The job was for him to ask Scott, an assistant scoutmaster, what time Ryan needed to be somewhere on Saturday. I don't know where, and I don't think I need to find out for this explanation. The date of the recording was on a Monday, and back then, our scout troop had meetings on Mondays. My smart act. Welcome to my smart side, and another act. What does act stand for? It Talk stands... about the paradigm, why don't you? The what? The paradigm. Which paradigm? Your YouTube channel. What about it? Okay. Acts stands for I ba love k tla. Act. Ryan is back. This time, he combined my smart side with act. I suggested that he talk about his YouTube channel, The Paradigm. When I mentioned the paradigm, editor me put the paradigm's profile picture in the P of the big CP on the screen. Ryan then tried to combine act with I belong to lie. Huh. Oh yeah, I forgot about that look here. To lie. Act. I. Okay. What? The paradigm. Which paradigm? Kuh. Choking. <laughs> Why are you guys watching? Maybe Ryan wasn't doing it too hard, but why was he doing it at all? The text on the screen implies that I didn't enjoy this as much as Ryan did. Oh, oh, of course. That, uh, I layered the red sample color and animated the transparency. The effect is that the video is fading to red to show the severity of what Ryan was doing. Why are you watching? Why are you guys watching this? He makes me weird noises. Why are you watching the I Be Lie series? You could do something better with your life than watch I Be Lie. See, you've been wasting about 17 minutes, probably less, because I do. Cut, cut some. Why are you watching I Fell Off the Light? Why are you watching Pack about him? If you want to be watching Good Mythical Morning with your host Evan Era and Steve Jobs, you could you could be watching good quality content, but instead you chose to spend your time watching Pack about him. And it's not just Pack about him; it's I Fell Off the Light. Well, if you want to watch Pack about him and you watch I Fell Off the Light, you have good taste, probably because. Is David. You could just be watching the, act, the actual troll video, or maybe you already have. <laughs> Ryan questioned the audience's choice of watching this because I was making weird noises because Ryan was choking me. I agreed with him, but I questioned the audience's choice of wasting their time by watching I Belove the Lie or even Pac Valham at all. Honestly, though, I think I Beloved to Lie is better... No, I mean... Honestly, though, I think I Beloved to Lie is some of the better content of Pac Valham, but that may be due to the fact that it involves DGR. In that case, you might as well just watch DGR. Ryan said that you could be watching Good Mythical Morning. That is a long-running daily Monday to Friday variety show hosted by Rhett and Link. I put an image of Good Mythical Morning on the screen in front of the DGR video, as if I were watching an episode of Good Mythical Morning. Ryan said the hosts are Evan Era and Steve Jobs, so I put images of those, of those men cropped around their faces 
in front of Rhett and Link's faces, as Ryan mentioned their names. Evan Era is a YouTuber that makes tutorials for magic tricks, pranks, and science experiments. Era is a stage name. His real last name is Rosenman. Steve Jobs was the CEO of Apple, but he died from a tumor. Speaking of tumor, I really could use some prayers for my uh, retired pastor. So he retired at, in December of 2023, and I, he has had multiple, multiple health issues over the years. Like in 2020 to 2021, you know, that winter he had uh, double pneumonia and COVID, and we weren't sure if he was going to make it, but he made it. God was not finished with him yet. Um, and he... He also had sciatic nerve pain. I don't know if that's still going on or if that's taken care of. Um, so, I, and then, okay, so when he was retired, he moved back to North Carolina. And then I think he was trying to sell his house, but maybe the real estate agent was actually a fake estate agent. But, and then... She was like squatting in their house or something. I, I don't know. I, I don't really know all the details, but something like that and all that stress gave him a heart attack. He survived. But the latest is that he has bladder cancer. And he has a surgery coming up real soon, or by the time I upload this video, maybe it's already happened. But uh, if you want to give some prayers, that would be nice, even if you don't know who he is. I mean, if you know me, maybe you know Richard. Should I even give his last name? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Maybe you know who my pastor, our pastor was. Maybe you don't. So we had voted our youth pastor to be like, to promote him to like assistant pastor. So working with our, with Richard, so that whenever he retired, and then and then also we voted so that uh, when Richard retired, Jay would step up as main pastor, and that has happened. And currently he's the one double duty that and youth pastor until we find somebody else to step up full-time youth pastor. And I digress. Corn! Ow. Sure, I'll take corn. A ninth. It's a big lump of knobs! It's got the juice! And none of that was actually written here. So now I'll go back to reading it, what is actually here. My mother interrupted my rant about the audience's choice of viewing. She asked if we went corn because it was close to supper time. I played the ending of the perfect music for this moment, Corn Cob by Kevin MacLeod. Cubby Emu reference. A 19-year-old boy presents to the emergency room unconscious. He watched, he, he created three days worth of I Beloved Alive footage. Here's what happened to his brain. I don't know much about Cubby Emu. The Paradigm made a comment that says that it's a Cubby Emu reference. Ryan said a 19-year-old boy, presumably me, presented to the emergency room unconscious. I guessed that it was because of the choking from earlier, so I put it in the top right corner of my face cam and made it small enough to not even overlap over Small enough to not even overlap the chandelier. The real reason Ryan said the 19 year old boy, presumably me, was unconscious was that I watched or created three days worth of I Bluff the Life footage.
Well, just like in 2020, COVID took over the world. I would love to lie. Took over my channel. If you look at all the videos, or at least the public ones from Pack of Elham, or actually, you know what? You can even include the unlisted ones because I have some Christmas edition ones. If you look at the Christmas ones from no all of Pack of Elham videos in 2020 up to now. Uh, I think a big percentage of them, even if you go minute by minute. There's more uh, type of off have than otherwise. I have regret the series almost. Well, not quite. But in the end, I don't regret it. I digress. Worth of I Beloved Alive footage. Here's what happened to his brain. Glitch editor. This moment is explained in the first part of the video. I said that at some arbitrary point in the video, I would show what I had so far of Glitch Editor for Act Up Port Horizon. This is that arbitrary point. Immediately before this, Ryan said, here's what happened to his brain as part of the Cubby Emu reference. So I guess you can say the Glitch Editor is what happened to my brain. All the cuts, effects, file not found text, and technical difficulties screen were deliberately added by me. Should I right now show you what Act Up Port Horizon might look like if I used this? You know what? I will do that and put it at some arbitrary point in this video. And that is the extra thing I mentioned in the previous video. That would make this take a, a long time, more than just reading this. Ooh. Too many shenanigans. BK is a 19-year-old boy presenting to the emergency room unconscious. Do, 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 do. This is what happened to his skull. <laughs> this is what happens when I allow more shenanigans. Yeah, I bluff life drifted from me actually doing the entire purpose of it more to doing shenanigans to it. Season 3 of I Bluff the Life probably have 10 parts to an episode and I've barely gotten a um, minute or barely gotten two minutes of the Trolled episode watched. Probably not. Are you wasting your time making these Admiral of the Live videos? Yep. And you're wasting it more. You're wasting it more. Okay. Now I'm adding entertainment so you get more views. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that, but yeah. That's what I do. Alright. BK confirms that the 19-year-old boy is me. If I were to allow so many shenanigans and I belong to like season 3, there might as well be 10 parts to an episode and I barely get to a minute or two in the trolled episode. Now, I almost missed it, but the bird clock chirped in the background. I didn't acknowledge it in the video and I may have not even noticed it. Anyway, I really wanted to get back to the basic concept of Eyeball of Delight and not waste any more time. I also didn't want Ryan to waste any more time. Chop Chop. We need Chop Chop. Chop Chop! If I'm not going to waste any more time, I need to Chop Chop. 
which means I just need to just get on with it. And yes, I do say the word just four times in this sentence, so just deal with it. I planned to include not only Madame Gasket saying chop chop, but also that one character from Planes that said chop chop hubba hubba. I searched and searched, but I really couldn't find a clip of that character saying that, so I only included Madame Gasket. She was an antagonist voiced by Jim Broadbent in the movie Robots, and she ran the chop shop. She had these machines called sweepers that would pick up spare parts in Robot City and take them to the chop shop. The sweepers also picked up outmodes, which are robots that are unable or unwilling to buy fancy schmancy upgrades and what have been fine with spare parts. The sweepers took them to the chop shop, too. The spare parts and outmodes were chopped up and put in a fiery incinerator to make the upgrades. In the first chop shop scene, Madame Gasket gave her workers a very short break, and when break time was over, she said, Chop chop, which is a pun. Fun fact. I made a small change to this next one. Let's... So, because, I'll give you a hint, it was relevant at that time, but it was, that was a while ago, so now something's changed, so now I had to make it past tense. See if I'm right. We'll see if I'm right here. Let's go through the door. Pat, pat, pat. 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 Editor me, show as many pictures of people named Pat as you can, if you want to. Okay, here's the first one. Now I meant like here's on the, the second one. I meant like on the screen there, at the same I know, time. Like right there. Then there. Actually, let me make it bigger. So that then there. Because it'll be the entire screen. Do it again. So, there's the first one. There's number two. There's number three. There's number five. And there's number twelve. Goodbye. Mm. Oh look, that one's Sajak. That one... Uh, I saw one of these on Guy's Grocery Games, and I don't know who the other ones are, because I haven't searched them yet. Five chefs are competing to take DGR down with their troll levels. Let's see. Let, let's beat them. First up, we have a sous chef. From Minneapolis. Alright, that's Florida. enough. That's enough. I want to get to 15 minutes on there before I get to 30 minutes on there. What? I don't know why Ryan was patting my head. Here is what I originally intended. At the same time Ryan was patting my head and I said pat pat pat, editor me would put pictures of people named Pat on the screen. I mentioned it because I thought of it then, and I didn't want to forget it. It went differently because Ryan was indicating them on the screen. I made my face cam bigger so that the pictures of people named Pat can more easily be seen. He skipped number 4, so I spaced it out so that number 4 appeared after he mentioned number 3 and before he mentioned number 5. He jumped to number 12, but I didn't have that many pictures of people named Pat so I just put the text, number 12, on the screen there. The first one is Pat Boone, and he is a singer, actor, and television host. The second one is Pat Toomey, and he is a Republic Senator from Pennsylvania. The third one is Pat Sajak, which is one of the two Pats I knew about, and he was the longtime host of America's game, Wheel of Fortune, until his retirement in 2024. The fourth one is Pat Neely, 
which is the other of the two Pats I knew about, but knew less about. And he is a barbecue chef, restaurateur. Rest, I forgot the N in restaurateur. He's a barbecue chef, restaurateur, and contestant on season 7, episode 4 of Guy's Grocery Games. I put S7E4 under Neely's picture when I mentioned the show to show you which season and episode it was that I watched and saw him. The fifth one is Pat O'Brien, and he is a sports news reporter and television host. So, here is what was different from what I had originally written a while ago to now. It was a few days ago I changed it. Back then, for Say Jack, it still, um, it, um, it, it's had, said, the third one is Pat Say Jack, which is one of the two Pats I knew about, and he is the longtime host of America's game, Wheel of Fortune. Actually, I'd, I'm not even sure if I had put the word long time on there or not, but maybe I did, because even back then when I wrote this, he had been hosting a long time. This was before he announced his retirement, and right now he has retired. So that's. That was the change. So, Ryan. Not my brother, but Rhett, nope, not Reynolds, uh, it's Seacrest, is, is going to be the new host of Wheel of Fortune, so, you, I mean, in reruns you, of the first 41 season, you can, or, yeah, we're having that one, so you can see Pat say Jack, but, I, um, I mean, Pat Sajak was not even the original host. I, I don't know. But anyway, episodes after Pat's retirement, you can see Ryan Seacrest. And, and now I digress again. Taking the chair. Ryan took the chair so that he could get something from the drawer under the desk that the computer is on. Ryan referenced a pun from Spongebob Squarepants episode called Gary Takes a Bath. I said that Ryan taking my chair is better than me falling backwards, which references that one time Dave did that trust fall fail while playing that one King Bling troll course. I told Editor B to put it on the screen to the right of the face cam, which I did. Ryan wanted me to put it in front of Dave on, on the screen above my face cam, but I didn't know that back then. A little later, I told him that the falling Dave is already gone because it's not a long clip. I'm glad that I didn't get to this explanation before December 11th, 2022, because that is the upload date of a video with another funny DGR moment that involves Dave's chair falling. I laughed very hard at it. What will I do with it during I Believe After Life Season 3? I guess nothing. I, I don't think I have used it so far. I don't think I even thought about it, and I probably won't even do it in episode 4, so I guess nothing. But I'm going to show you that um, December 11th, 2022 moment of <laughs> Dave's chair falling. 
And then editor me is going to put them side by side unless I decide to not do that. Or I forget about it and not watch this part. Oh, by the way, the chair digresses. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Uh, I don't mean David Clamage. I mean DGR Dave. Actually, I don't think I've ever heard anybody call him Dave. Either David or David Clamage or Ransk, but not just Dave. Okay. My brain is trying to come up with a pun with digress and David, but uh, I. Also, I'll put on the Mario hat here in a second. Okay, I just want to stay right here, I think. Yes, sir, Bob! Go back indoor? Oh, okay. Oh, 
Kelly Clarkson. Okay, so. King Bling, I'm trusting you. Here's a trust exercise. I trust you. Ah! <laughs> to be fair, I would be lying if I said that I have never fallen out of a, ch a chair like that. And also, I mean, specific, even if I specifically said in my bedroom at 865 East, I'm be honest with you, I would be lying if I were to say that that's never happened to me. I forget the specific details, but it's going to make this already too long video even longer, so I digress. Probably wouldn't tell you anyway. Laughing cortification. <laughs> when I paused, Dave was in the middle of laughing at the troll that took him under the bridge. When I resumed, I cortified the rest of the laugh, as I like to do. Spill the beans! It's feature barf. It was so close to the line, but it's feature barf. Put it back in. Put it back in. Ryan, put it back in because you might... Spill some beans from some that I've already opened. Yeah, I don't spill beans. Now I need to find if any that I... Ryan picked up a handful of packets of beans and shook. As you know, I had opened some of the packets, so I told Ryan to put them back so he doesn't spill any. Ryan made the pun that he doesn't want to spill the beans. The other meaning is to not reveal a secret. Background and forth. I open whichever ones those are. Those were originally under here. There's three, maybe four that I've opened. I don't see feature barf and any that I open. So I'm open this one because I see feature barf right here. Right here. Right here. Feature barf. As I said in the intro, a shenanigan can be something funny in the background. Ryan was going back and forth in the background, which was funny, right? Right here is how Ginger Billy says, right here. I don't know why Ryan was trying to cover me with a blanket. Well, I made it to 15 minutes. No? Okay. Fife and breath. You want to guess what flavor I have by spelling my breath? Probably not. Yeah. No, there's no liquid in this one. Nope, not here. There's the drum roll from the beginning of Fife and Drum that I sometimes use before revealing which bean I eat. I jokingly asked my mother if she wanted to guess the flavor by smelling my breath, and of course I knew she didn't want to smell my breath. So she just guessed a few times. Her first guess was licorice, which is a good flavor that she doesn't like. I like it, though, and is not included in Bean Boozled 5th edition, which I was using. It is included in 7th edition with the new Bean Boozly flavored, but uh, I die. I don't know. Yeah. Fear a smart, click the like button. If you're genius, click the subscribe button. And there is absolutely no way that I am going to include this one here. This. Ow. Will I be able to do both of these 
in the same video, or do I just want to make two separate videos? I mean, if I could do both of these together, that'd be great, but I don't know that's that's going to happen, but I'll just find out. And, uh, so, yeah. I talked about Matt Parker, the stand-up mathematician in this one. And you can see in the thumbnail, one of the jokes and shenanigans there, there's a, it's a fortune fiendster, who's an actress, and then there's Teller from Penn and Teller. He, well, 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 what do you get if you combine them together? Fortune Teller. Get Fortune Teller! Aha. Uh -huh. But I digressed.